If you actually tried to picture Graves' number in your head, then your head would collapse to form a black hole. That, that's actually, that's not just some sort of crazy sort of pictorial image. It would, it would. There'd be too much, you couldn't store that much information in your head. People think uh, mathematicians just basically look at bigger and bigger calculations and bigger and bigger numbers, which is not entirely true. But Graham's number, uh, I, I love because it's the biggest number that's been used constructively. Well, because there's a, there's a sort of maximum amount of what we call entropy that can be stored in your head. And the maximum amount of entropy you can store in your head is, is related to, this, to a black hole the size of your head. And the entropy of a black hole the size of your head carries less information than it would take to write out Graham's number. So the inevitability is if you started to try to write out Graham's number in your head, then your head would eventually have so much information that it would collapse to form a black hole. <laughs> <laughs>you start with a small number and uh, three, three is a small number, what you can do is you can start adding three to itself. So you could do three uh, plus three plus three and you keep going. In fact, what I've done here is I've multiplied three by three, right? So you could just do three times three. That works just as well. And if you want, you could do lots of these. You could do three times three times three and you can multiply it lots of times and that uh, as well, that's three, three cubed. Okay, and that's 27, so we're, we're, we're happy with that. I could write this another way. The way I would write this down in arrow notation would be I'd write three arrow three. And that just means the same thing. Three multiplied by itself three times. Hopefully you're still with me at this stage. Now I say, what's three double arrow three? If you do three to the power of three to the power of three, we would write that as, uh, that is three, to the power of, to the power of three. So this means three arrow, three arrow, three. Now what does this, well three arrow three, well we've already seen that that's 27. So three arrow 27, okay. And three arrow 27, well that's three to the power 27. And if you actually work that out, it comes out to be around about 7.6 trillion. And at this point you can go wild, right? How many, how many arrows do you want? So the next one, let's say we did three to the power of, to the power of, to the power, oh, arrow, 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 or whatever you want to call this, uh, uh, three. Well, that, 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 that is equivalent to three to the, to the double, to the double, to the three, to the double, to the double, to the, th that's three to the power of three, to the power of three, to the power of three, and that stack, that stack is 7.6, trillion threes high and you start from the top and work your way down and you get an almighty number you get a number that is absolutely off the chart uh, it, uh, you couldn't write these numbers down you, you'd run out of pens in the universe don't forget just three three stacked together or 7.6 trillion now we've got a stack of three 7.6 trillion of them high and the question is why would you want to know right and so actually the reason we have arrow notation uh, is to look at very huge numbers the famous, the quintessential, uh, never-ending, well, it does end, it's finite number, is Graham's number, and it's the solution to a math problem. So uh, in math, we do things uh, called combinatorics, where you look at big combinations, and we, we look at uh, things, uh, networks, which mathematicians call graphs, and you look at different ways of uh, coloring in graphs. And so mathematicians looked at ways to color in, effectively, graphs that are linked to higher dimensional cubes. So, uh, I, I bear with me for all this. You can get cubes in higher dimensions and look at different ways to color them in. And they tried to count the number of dimensions. Okay, I tell you what, I've got, I've got an analogy. There's a very famous analogy for how this works. So, imagine uh, you've got a, a, a group of people. Uh, so, uh, you could have, for example, uh, three people trying to have a relaxing time drinking champagne. Uh, you can uh, then try and select uh, committees or subsets from that group of people. You can put some people in one committee, some other people in another committee, and you know, some people can be in a few committees, and there's a whole bunch of committees that you can put together. And then what you do is you say, okay, I've got all these committees, and I'm going to sort of pick pairs of committees. Okay? So I've got a bunch of pairs. E you know, committees can form pairs, and you know, each committee can be in more than one pair, and so on. And then you say, OK, I've got all these pairs of committees, and I'm going to give them a colour. Each pair is going to have a colour, blue or red. OK? Now I ask the question, how many people do I need there to be, in the first place, 
to guarantee that there are at least four committees for which, <laughs> let's get this right, uh, there are four, uh, there are four committees. Each pair made out of those four committees has the same colour. And all people appear in, I forget. And for which each member of that committee is in an even number of committees. The, the ultimate question is, if I put these weird conditions on those uh, links of matching up different committees, what's the smallest number of people required for that to be true? So, uh, <laughs> that's the question that Graham was trying to answer in a very roundabout sort of way. So he said, OK, fine. But he wasn't applying it to committees, it was to some... No, it was to do with hypercubes in, extra di in higher dimensions, but it's the same question, essentially. And, and they worked out that the, there is an answer, it's not infinite, and uh, the answer is not bigger than Graham's number. And Graham's number was developed uh, in 1971 as being the maximum possible number of people you need for this to be true. And at the same time, they worked out the smallest number, uh, which was six. So somewhere between six and Graham's number is your answer. However, to actually see Graham's number, we have some more paper. Uh, we use arrow notation to get to Graham's number, except uh, we start uh, and I use threes for a reason, because you start with uh, three, uh, arrow, 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 and you call that your first number, and the notation is to call that G1. And, and already, don't forget how mind-boggling this number was last time. This, this, is, this is already off the chart, right? Let's call this stupidly big. Okay. Right. Now we say, well, it's G2. Well, G2 is a three where we've got a lot of arrows, how many arrows have we got? We've got G1 of them. Okay, so this was stupidly big, this is stupidly, stupidly big, right? And then we carry on, we do G3, and we get a whole bunch of arrows, how many? Well, you guessed it, G2 of them. And, and then the thing is, you're getting numbers which are beyond arrow notation, right? This is just Ah, and then you keep going, right? And uh, Graham's number is if you keep doing this, you keep doing G's, right? You go all the way down to uh, G64 equals Graham's number. So it's just unimaginably big. I mean, literally. That's Graham's number. What do we know about Graham's number? Well, we don't know what its first digit is. We do know its last digit. Its last digit is seven. Uh, apparently we know about its last 500, but its last one is seven. People say, how big is it, right? And you can't even describe the, how many digits this number. You can't, uh, you can't even, like the, the number you would need to say how many digits there are. Yourself, you couldn't describe how many digits. And then it's, ah. Uh, uh, and so the answer to this problem is somewhere between six and Graham's number. Recently though, uh, mathematicians have narrowed it in even further. I think it was uh, early 2000s, someone pulled it in to be between 11 and Graham's number, right? So we're narrowing in, right? We're going to get there. Uh, as far as mathematicians are concerned, 11 to the biggest number ever used constructively is quite precise, right? Because no matter how big a number you think of, right? And this is just stupid big. It's smaller than infinity, right? There's still an infinite number of numbers that are bigger than Graham's number, right? So frankly, we've pretty much nailed it, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's not the largest number to have been used in a, in a mathematical proof. There's these sort of tree theorems that use larger numbers now. Uh, but, you know, back in the 70s it was. Uh, just an interesting little anecdote about, about Graham himself. He was uh, actually a circus performer, as well as a mathematician. So uh, he was certainly doing a few circus tricks when he, uh, <laughs> when he came up with this.